Hello pandas and welcome to the follow-up to last week's video, one that nobody asked for but I feel I'm uniquely qualified to make. So at the risk of giving away too many secrets and possibly irritating others who would rather the competition be minimized, here is bottle picking tips and tricks. Now first and foremost, I think it's important to point out that this is purely for entertainment purposes only. I'm not encouraging anyone to do this, I'm not suggesting anybody do this, and I certainly don't think you should do this. But if anybody does want to, I strongly suggest they check their local laws because the legality of removing things from garbage bins or recycling bins will depend on where you're at. Some places it's a complete hard no, some places it's certain things from certain places, and certainly anybody who's thinking about it should be well versed in what constitutes trespassing in their area. Let's all stay out of trouble, yeah? Now you may have noticed I'm not wearing any sort of glasses today, and that's because we're not hanging out in this stuffy corner. No, we're going to head out into the world, and I'm going to take you along to show you a unique look inside my my thought processes and when I'm out and about what I think works, what works for other people but is not for me. It'll be fun. Come on, let's go. Come on, I know a spot. Now the first question, or one of the first questions, is probably gonna be what day? What is a good day to go out? Well, it varies. If you can figure out what uh, what time the bins all get picked up, then maybe going out the day before or early in the morning just before would be best. But then again, maybe that's leaving it too late and someone else will have gone through everything already, in which case you might be better off doing it sometime midweek and hopefully get there before anybody else. Aim for a Monday, Tuesday rather than a Thursday, Friday. Maybe the weekends are good. Um, morning, evening. Personally, I prefer going out during the day because, you know, skulking around in the dark makes people suspicious. The only thing I can say for certain is a person needs to try different things and figure out what works for them. I talked to one fella who swears by going out in the evening, the day, like just after the trucks go around. I don't know why that might be. Well, I even thought maybe um, going out the day after New Year's would be the best day ever, and that was absolutely not true. So it's not something that you can really predict. Without trying to explain something I don't understand, holidays are not as predictable as you might think. The important thing is just you got to see what works for you. Now there's a bunch of different styles. The most popular seem to be the um, uh, the the baby cart or a bike with a trailer, uh, and then the the shopping cart. That's a classic. But for me, I find simple is best. You know, two feet in a heartbeat. The old chevre legs. Just uh, just a pair of gloves and a bag, and a vehicle if you're able. 
Now, I notice some people, maybe that's cheating. And, of course, insurance and gas are not cheap, so it's possible I'm the idiot. But it's my video, and this is just what works best for me. Yeah, I used to have a trolley. I tried a trolley a couple of times, but that was such a pain in the butt. I'm... Some people like it. That's not for me. And not that we have any control over it, but... This is the perfect day. Like, it's it's a bit chilly, but it's just cool enough. You know, a hat and like, you don't have to change outfits halfway through the day. This is perfect. Again, not that it matters, but I found generally one in 10, one in 15 of these bins will have that household's bottles in them from the week. And a lot of people say that, like a lot of people wonder how anybody throws money away. But the truth is, each of these households will produce between 50 cents and like $5 worth of bottles a week. So that's uh, anywhere from... So basically that's a range of like $25 to $250 a year that they're not reclaiming. That doesn't... that sounds like a lot, but honestly, you're talking about... Not everybody has that kind of a space where they can just devote an entire corner of their garage to this ever-growing pile. It's sticky, it's smelly, they can't use the space for anything else, and then it's still a chore to bring it in. For a lot of households, I would argue that just throwing them in the bin is the correct choice. It's not for me, because I bring them in on a regular basis, but yeah, if you live in an apartment or something, for a lot of people it's not worth it. And while we're out here, I think it's important to at least touch on the private property situation. See, here we have a pile of rusty steel that's probably garbage, but just to keep ourselves out of trouble, we gotta make sure we are staying on public property the whole time. So that has nothing to do with us. Even if it was a pile of bags full of bottles, even if it was a pile of lead acid batteries, can't guarantee it. So we're gonna keep on moving. Now, how about some techniques? Now, not every Bottle Depot will accept them if they're crushed, so uh, if yours doesn't, I apologize because this will not apply to you, but for me, crushed is fine. So, I generally do, but it's important to find a balance between time and space. See, when I first started, I went hard. You can get these things really small. But the problem is, setting all of these up and lining them and stomping them down takes a lot of time, and I generally find that I have more space than time. You might be racing against the truck coming along or something, in which case you really need to move quickly. The cans are a little faster if you do the stomp and drag, but it's dirty and time consuming, so I find the best thing to do with a can is to just crush on both ends and fold it in half. You can do it pretty quick if you practice a bit. Now is that the smallest it gets? No, but it's really quick. I find these ones fun too. Some people will get these right down really little and then you put the lid back on and it's very small and yeah that takes up very little space but it's time consuming. So for me I find twisting them is the best compromise between being quick and getting it small and honestly that takes up very little space. Now some of them are so small already that you can crush them, but honestly, it doesn't make that much of a difference. These ones, it didn't change much. And then these things, it's hardly worth doing. I still generally do them, but sometimes I don't even bother and I feel all right about that. Now these larger ones are kind of fun and definitely worth crushing. I find rolling them up works best. it off, give it a roll. That's best for me. Yes, you can work harder and get them really, really flat, but again, time. So one way to do these is take the lid off, take your fingers and put the knuckles in there and sort of like force them in and then you can kind of just flatten it down like that. Works pretty good, but it depends on your situation. It takes a little longer, uh, but another way and slightly more fun is just put it on the ground and step on it. The only problem there is it's a bit loud, so maybe it's not always best, but it's the most fun. Now these milk jugs are kind of a pain in the butt. There's no best way to do it because they always tend to unfold, but 
If you're not worried about slipping, I like to stand them up like this and try and crush them straight down. Just based on what I've seen, this seems to unfold the least. So that's how I go with it. Now the only other thing, for me, the glass, these things, they get heavy. So I like to wait until I've got a few of them and then when I find a bin that's got like a bunch of glass in there, I'll just stack them all together into a bag and kind of leave a convenient little stash. It might go missing before I get a chance to, to come back around. And if you're trying to do a, a single pass through with like a cart or something, then obviously that's uh, not ideal. But it saves energy. So that works for me. Now I've got a few more details, but we can go over that when we get home because it's a little warmer there. So let's do that. Welcome back to our cozy corner. Now there are a couple things I didn't elaborate on in the last one, mostly because I wanted to stick straight to the, the information to try and keep that one as, uh, as direct and targeted as possible. But I think we could elaborate a little bit on what exactly bottle picking means for a society. Now I did mention that it was uh, a big factor in reducing the crime rate and that is major in my opinion, but it's not just um, people who are on their last legs. It contributes a lot to the youth, for example, not specifically bottle picking because I don't think children should be out there digging through the garbage, but when I was a youth, it was my only source of income because nobody, nobody's gonna hire a 12 year old. I don't think you're even allowed to. But young people need money too, and not everybody gets an allowance. For me, I collected all the bottles from my house and from my grandparents' house, and yeah, I had to split it with my siblings, but it was a source of income. I mean, I spent it on video games and stuff, but it doesn't matter what it's spent on. Kids need to learn the value of money. There are also lots of people who are well beyond their working years, either in age or simply physical health, that need something, and this is the perfect kind of thing to get out there and get some exercise, and bring in a little extra money to pay for the things that you need. It definitely helps uh, fill the gaps for anybody who may be having some trouble making ends meet. Something else I've noticed about people who do this, regardless of where they come from, it's likely you'll build a route, a place that you go back to on a daily or a weekly basis, and I've noticed people tend to be caretakers. You start to think of a space as as your space, whether you live there or not, and you start to try and keep it nice and care about the people you see there, especially when you meet a few of them and they start coming out with bags of bottles to give you because they're just trying to help or they don't need them. Whatever their reasoning, you will start to meet people and you'll start to care about the spaces. One of my friends I've met who does this, he's a bit older and he sleeps outside, but he sleeps in the same space and I always see him there feeding the birds or like decorating it with stuffed animals that he's found just to try and make it a home. And it probably looks like garbage to a lot of people, but I think it's really charming and I love the way he takes care of the animals. And I think that's just a good example of what I was talking about really. I don't think that's unusual. I think that's more of the default for human beings. I think a neighborhood is cleaner, safer, and better if it has a few bottle pickers going through the, the less visible back sections. I suppose it depends on where you're at, but from what I've seen, it's a good thing. I guess my point there is if you see your neighborhood bottle picker, help them out, maybe kick them down a few cans, because you're not going to get rid of them. and. There are a lot of things about their presence that are pretty easy to appreciate if you look for them. So this is a lot better if we all get along, because it's their neighborhood too, whether you realize it or not. It's not much of a segue, but I'm reminded of an experiment they did in Vancouver for a couple years. Whether they're still doing it, I'm not sure. They added a return deposit on single-use coffee cups. I don't know if you paid it at the at the till or if it was just for returning coffee cups, but obviously this wasn't for people who bought a coffee and then could bring back their their cup. Yes, you could, but I think it's pretty obvious who this really helped out were the, the would-be bottle pickers, the people who normally are out there picking through the trash and moving things out of the waste stream and back into the, the recycle stream. I think it was a massive success because not only did a lot of people 
who were having financial hardship get a bunch of extra money that they weren't expecting, but it got so much trash out of the waste stream and out of the landfill. Personally, I think that should be the standard everywhere on all single-use beverage containers. A 5 or 10 cent deposit on every coffee cup, every fountain soda cup, every smoothie cup, and keep the producers responsible for them, funding it and running it. Because there is so much waste, and it's such an effective way to get the bottles out of it, it could work with everything. That's Whether it'll ever happen, I don't know. But for the short-term experiment that they did with the coffee cups, it was a massive success. Back to bottle picking. I love it. It's like a combination Easter egg hunt and trick-or-treating. However, it is not a career. I would never consider it one. It is way too unreliable and inconsistent. At its very best, bottle picking can be a helpful way to supplement an income while building something better and more long-term. That's what I've been using it for. While we're on the subject, it is supplemental income and there is no such thing as tax-free income. So for anybody doing something similar, this, consider this a gentle reminder to record it, write it down, so that you can remember it come tax time. From what I've heard, those guys don't mess around, so best to get it right the first time. Now I know I said it in the beginning, but I really want to stress this point. I'm not encouraging anybody to do this, and you need to check your local laws. I know the highest courts in Canada and the US ruled that any sort of bins that are put out on public property are free and open to scavenging, but Many municipalities have bylaws preventing people from taking things out of the recycling designated bins. Legal matters are not the place for thoughts and feelings and opinions, so I'm not going to bother to speculate on why, but I know that ticket is not written very often. And that's everything I have to share about bottle picking, tips and tricks. Whether it applies to you or not, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you did, you can show some support by clicking the like button or keeping an eye out for that merch, which should be live as soon as I can get the whole thing fandangled. I wish I had a date, but I don't. If you have any stories about bottle picking or bottle pickers, then please share them down below because I'd love to hear what your perspective is on it. In any case, leave it better than you found it. And keep doing the thing. Thank you.